Good evening, everyone. It is uh, truly a, a joy for me to just say hi to you guys again tonight. And um, thank you for uh, taking the time, investing into each other's lives uh, here in the life groups. And of course, Sunday morning, as you guys get ready to discuss um, the passage we went over, uh, such an incredible, incredible passage of scripture. So well known, so uh, famous, but so unknown. Uh, really, that's uh, what I think when I think of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the passage on love, and uh, you know, a couple of things that, that I just reiterate uh, for you guys tonight. Uh, this is a passage of scripture that defines agape love. And that is such a, a beautiful, beautiful uh, thing. Because, you know, we talk so much in the church about the, you know, the four different kinds of love, you know, the, the storge kind of love, the affectionate love, the eros kind of love, the, you know, romantic uh, love, the uh, phileo love, the brotherly love, the friendship kind of love, and then, of course, the agape love. And it's such a, a new, uh, really, kind of uh, focus in the New Testament, as we saw that was only found uh, 20 times in the Septuagint, a Greek translation of the Old Testament, uh, in secular, uh, you know, writings at, of Paul's day. It was only found a couple times. And then when we come to the New Testament, uh, it's it's found, um, you know, uh, 116 times and uh, used 75 times by the Apostle Paul. So it becomes very much a, a word of uh, Christianity. And uh, what's the definition of it? Of course, throughout Scripture, the definition is Jesus came and laid down his life. Uh, you, uh, every time Paul talks about, not every time, but a lot of the times he talks about uh, the love of God, he says, and he gave himself for us. And he gave himself for us. So this is the love of, of God. But uh, to put some flesh on that for us, not just, you know, of course, you and I can't go redeem the world by lay down our lives. Of course, we're to lay down our lives for one another in a, you know, lesser sense than Jesus did at Calvary. But, um, you know, what does it mean to live our lives? You know, there's one thing of dying. There's another thing of living, living our lives for uh, the gospel, living our lives uh, out as a witness of Jesus Christ, living our lives in love. And uh, and so this is such a beautiful, beautiful topic of scripture. Uh, and here in 1 Corinthians, uh, you know, chapter 13, we have the, the word being defined. Uh, this is agape love, you know, love suffers long, is kind, love does not envy, does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, doesn't seek its own, isn't provoked, thinks no evil, you know, on and on and on uh, down the list uh, we go uh, to that last phrase in the beginning of verse 8, love never fails. And of course, we'll pick up there uh, on Sunday, and it's going to be a great uh, Father's Day message on love. Of course, we'll get into, uh, you know, now abide faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. And so, um, you know, encourage you to bring your fathers out, uh, invite people out. It's going to be just a great uh, morning. Of course, we have a special uh, treat for all the fathers, so it's going to be just a great time. So, um, you know, it's, it's going to be, um, you know, uh, just a, a great time to, you know, invite people out. So I encourage you to do that. Uh, but, you know, just thinking about uh, this definition. So we have the definition of love, but then, you know, you look at it and you think, well, there's no way that I can do this as you look at the list, you know, and a lot of times that's how people are. A lot of times people are like, uh, you know, I, I can't uh, ever love like this. So it's just kind of like something that we put off. It's not for me. You know, the reality is, and we, we titled the message, The Evidence of Being Filled with the Holy Spirit. The evidence of God dwelling in you is the love of God flowing through you. Think about that. The evidence of God dwelling in you is the love of God flowing through you. Because God is love. And we looked at this in 1 John chapter uh, 4. God, the, the statement that he is love. He doesn't possess love. It is who His he is. By nature, God is love. And if God is dwelling in me, his love will flow out of me. It, well, what is that love? And it's listed then for us here in 1 Corinthians 13. And it's not just a list of do's. Do this, do this. It's, it's this is who, this is what love is. And this is who Christ is. And this is how he's going to live through us. This is the fulfillment of the Great Commission. As the Father sent me, Jesus said in John 20, 21, so now I send you. He sent him to be a witness of the Father. We saw that in John chapter 1, verse 18, 
that no one's seen God any time, but God, the only begotten Son, who is in the heart of God, has come to declare him to us. This is what it means that, that Jesus came to this earth to be a witness of who the Father is, and mainly of the love of the Father. And we see that throughout the Gospel of John in an amazing way. And and then you come to, you know, um, John 20, 21, and Jesus says, Now the same way God sent me, I'm sending you. And of course, Acts chapter 1, verse 8, that we are witnesses of him. We are to be witnesses of him to this world. And he is love. So without love, we can't be a witness. We can't fulfill the Great Commission. And it, it's so, so important for us uh, to, uh, you know, just recognize and really see God and be dependent upon the Lord to fill us with his Holy Spirit. And the last thing I would say in the context of 1 Corinthians is, is that there is no division where this kind of love exists. Just like John 17, when Jesus prayed that the, that uh, they, that we would have unity uh, just as the Father and the Son are unified in the Trinity, so we would be unified together uh, with them, with, with each other. Listen, when we exercise the love listed here in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, there is no division because love wipes it out. Well, there might be disagreement. There might be strong disagreement. In fact, where there is stronger disagreement, this love is great is in greater need and the the need there uh for us to to just possess this kind of love and when there is it's like hey we're unified because jesus christ uh unifies us and his love pours through us because no matter what you think or what i think what matters more is loving one another and uh so we can love one another in all of our disagreements so really good stuff some great stuff for us to think through to pray through to, for you guys to discuss tonight. And I, let me just leave you with this. This isn't like a, a cool thing for this week. This is one of those topics in scripture that we need every moment of every day of our life if we're going to be a witness of Jesus Christ. Starting, of course, in our homes. That's why Paul, when he writes Ephesians, he says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then he begins to list off the relationship we have with husband and wife, with, with children and parents, uh, moving in then to the employer-employer relationship, moving into then the spiritual warfare aspect. That's the rest of the book of Ephesians. Uh, and, and so uh, the, these are the fruits, is the evidences of being filled with the Holy Spirit. And it, all of those things possess, need to possess the list of characteristics of love that we find here in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Lord bless you guys and just use you for his glory.